<laughs> um, it's great to see you all. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Signe and I work for the Nisley Interactive team at iEARN USA and we are so thrilled to um, meet you this morning and to share with you what the Nisley students in India have been up to um, during their program so far. I'll give a brief um, overview of how this event will run and then I will turn the floor over to the Nisley students to share um, about their community service and volunteerism abroad, which is the theme of the event today. Um, thank you all for joining us. It's a special week. This is International Education Week. Um, so there's a bunch of really exciting events, celebrating exchange um, happening virtually and in person over the world. So we encourage you to check out the website to um, find more events to engage with. But thank you for joining us today. Um, a brief uh, technical point is we encourage um, you all to use the chat box throughout this event. Um, before you chat, just please make sure you adjust your chat settings to say all panelists and attendees or everyone so we can all see your chats. Um, sometimes the default is just to the panelists, um, but we'd like for everyone to be able to see the questions that you're asking. Feel free to use a chat box to ask questions throughout the event. If the speakers are not able to address your questions in the moment, we'll circle back during the Q&A. Um, a brief slide introducing the presenters today. There are five students currently in indoor India. Lucia, Ria, Megan, Alice, and Stephanie, um, and they are, have been working hard to prepare their presentation to share about their community service activities in India. <laughs> um, I believe that's all I had to say on my end. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to your presenters. Thank you. No. Hi, everyone. I'm going to try and get in the frame here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, I'm Raya, and I'm here from Indoor India. I'm originally from Asheville, North Carolina. My family's in Kentucky now, so I've got a lot of places covered. And I'm kind of going to be talking to you about how uh, here in India, we've kind of had to broaden our idea of service because we were, we were confused initially to find that what we would think of as standard forms of community service are, are not actually seen nearly as much here in India. And so that was kind of um, almost like a blow for us because we all, you know, used to do a lot of service in America and we weren't really sure what to do about that. It could have something to do with the fact that India only has one day weekends, at least here in indoor. And um, aside from just being really bad for my sleep, this is also bad for having time to do community service. So we we're trying to think about what else we can do that, you know, can kind of fulfill our need to have service in our lives. So I, you know, I propose that all the time we take, uh, spend taking selfies with all our friends for the new Facebook picture should count. But uh, my friend shot that down. So I think that we really have to broaden it a little more. So I kind of created a definition of service for you guys. Um, basically, I think service is anything that betters the environment or the lives of people around you while helping to put your own life in perspective, helping you to think about other people a little bit and other cultures even, which when you think about it aligns pretty closely to our entire lives here in India. So we're kind of trying to frame our entire lives as a potential for service. So um, our goal in India is essentially to, to be these cross-cultural, um, almost diplomats, uh, communicators, to bridge the gap between the cultures. And it's, it's an incredible opportunity to be here, but it's also a really big responsibility because we're the sole representatives of America for a lot of people in India and through blogs, communication with people back home, webinars like this, we can also represent India to Americans. And so this is an incredibly important job and we see it as service to make sure we're constantly doing it responsibly. And so, I mean, I think everyone can live their life through the lens of service, right? Just making sure that you're always improving the lives around you and that you're really trying to do the best you can to just, you know, make the world a better place. But I think it's so important, especially for us here in India, because we're representing an entire country. And the impact we have, you know, can spread really far because we are so in the spotlight and, you know, we are the foreigners and everyone's always watching us and we have a lot to represent. And so we want to make sure we're doing that responsibly. 
And so one of the ways we do that is to just completely embrace Indian culture. We want to embrace our lives with our host family, embrace all the holidays. So you can see here on the PowerPoint, we've got, um, well, the bottom left is just a picture of a selfie in case you doubted that we take selfies all the time. <laughs> um, but then on the top left, we have all of us in our dupatas, which is basically Indian scarves for a Sikh festival because Stephanie's family is actually Sikh, they're not Hindu. So we all got to um, celebrate that festival with her family. And then on the far right, you have Alice looking gorgeous um, on Diwali with a little rangoli that she made, which is a way people celebrate to keep out like demons. And so, or no, actually it's to welcome the gods, sorry. Um, anyway, and so the, when we, these pictures are just kind of showing like our efforts to really embrace the culture here, right? We think it's really important. That's what we're here to do. We're here to show people that we care and to really learn about new cultures because that can help us learn about ourselves. It can help us learn about America and it can really help us learn about the world. So we're trying to embrace not only the festivals, but just our daily lives with the family and everything we do different and get past that culture shock and really become comfortable here. And we see that as service in itself. And um, we also, we think keeping an open mind is really important, right? So when we're trying new foods or even trying new things to do, new ways to live life, it's really important to keep an open mind. And, you know, I see that, you know, when my family's giving me new foods to try, I think it's really important that I try them and that I do well and that all of us do that because it's part of, it's part of our experience here. And so, um, Let's see, another way that I think we, we do service here in India just by fulfilling our job as exchange students is by learning Hindi, which is obviously a huge part of our exchange. You know, we spend a lot of time learning Hindi and it's, it's so incredible to see the looks on people's faces when you know, we the foreigners just start speaking Hindi. And I think this is especially important because like we said, it's about being responsible exchange students. It's about making sure you create those cross-cultural ties and make the world a better place. And the best way to do that is to speak to people in their own language, to make sure you're showing that you really care, you know, you really care about what they have to say and even the way that they want to say it, which is often in their own language. And so just kind of to wrap it up, like essentially, if we, if we are doing things right and responsibly here as exchange students in India, then our whole lives should be service because they should be helping others, they should be representing our country, and they should be creating those cross-cultural empathetic ties that are so important, you know, especially in today's political environment. And so um, even though this is kind of the way we're framing this, we have done like some service um, opportunities that we would consider kind of more traditional in America. And so to talk to you a little bit more about those is Alice. So I'll hand it over to her now. Hi, um, so my name is Alice, and just as Raya said, I'm here to talk about the activities we've done over the past four and a half months that we in the U.S. might think of as um, typical service activities. So the first two service events we did um, are the bottom two pictures on your screen right now, and they were both plantation events. So one was with an organization called Betar India, and one was with the Indian version of JROTC, if you're familiar with that. So at these two events, um, we got to go um, outside of our school campus and plant some trees. And here, uh, both these two separate events, we realized that they were more awareness campaigns and they were often more focused on taking photos um, instead of actually you know, doing the dirty work, which we totally understand, you know, that's really important um, as well, but we thought of it, we, we wanted to put some saplings in the ground, and so we realized it was a great time for self-advocacy, um, and, you know, we just, we just asked, and I think we ended up planting four trees between the five of us, but we had a lot of fun doing it, um, and it was a learning experience. So our next event was Nagad Kirtan, as Raya mentioned, the picture of us all in our orange dupattas on the previous slide. Um, it was a Sikh religious event, and here we stepped up to serve food to passers-by um, during the procession for the Sikh holy book. So we passed out masala rice, and um, this, this was a really great opportunity for us because we did feel like we were serving the community, um, and instead of just watching the festival from the sidelines, we were actually involved um, and helping out. Our most recent service event was for the Indoor Cancer Foundation, so that's the top two photos on your screen. 
Um, Indoor Cancer Foundation is a very important organization. They specialize in head and neck oncology and they do not uh, turn away any patient regardless of financial or social background. So you could come in with a 10 rupee note and they're going to give you stellar care. So we worked um, on the outside of their building. We weeded, we cleaned windows. Steph and Raya even got to use the lawnmower. We organized rooms um, and that was a lot of fun and it really felt you know, like we were, we were giving back and we were contributing um, to our host community. Um, and now we've actually organized bi-weekly service opportunities with the ICF. Um, and our next goal is to use our Hindi volunteering there. Um, you know, here in where we live in central India, English is commonly spoken. It's not super common, but we definitely have to use our Hindi while volunteering um, it just to work out logistics. Uh, we've especially found that English, you know, it's very common with uh, people who are very educated or maybe higher class, but um, sometimes, you know, with the people who we're serving or working with while volunteering, um, it just makes things a lot easier, more comfortable to speak in Hindi, which we obviously love um, getting to practice. So um, self-motivation is a quality that we found very important in all aspects of our exchange year, but it's definitely crucial when it comes to volunteering. Um, it's not expected, you know, really that we would want to volunteer. When we asked about planting trees, they were kind of like, you know, you want to you wanna get dirt on your hands, what? Um, but as soon as, you know, as long as we're persistent and just ask, uh, we're met with really positive response. So, you know, just um, developing our self-advocacy advocacy skills. Um, another part of volunteering that I really enjoy is spending time with our Indian peers. So the bottom, or the actually the diagonal, the top left corner and the bottom right corner, both uh, feature pictures of us with our um, Indian classmates. And um, I really like collaborating with our friends here for positive change. Um, we get to chat in Hindi and I definitely think there's no better time to bond than when we're all wearing surgical masks and little surgeon's caps um, as you can see in the top left hand corner photo. Um, so to talk more about our Indian peers and our school life in general, I'm going to hand things over to Megan. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm going to adjust this because I'm a little bit shorter than Alice's. But um, my name is Megan. I'm from California, and I'm here on a gap year learning Hindi this year. And I'm here to talk a little bit more about school life. So one of the great ways that we get to interact with our Indian peers here and learn all about the Indian culture is through cultural performances. And it's been so much fun. We have right now we're currently in a dance class, which we take after our Hindi class every day and a pottery class. So we've been able to experience all sorts of different Indian art forms. And the picture that you see on the bottom, the nice dance bhangra pose was from our first performance that we did in August. And it was for Indian Independence Day. We spent a while preparing for that. And apparently our performance showed our dance teacher that we were good enough to be in her core performer group. And so since then, We've got to learn a couple different styles of dance. We actually just did another performance yesterday and it was a lot of fun. It was another bhangra performance that we did with our Indian peers as Alice was talking about. So we got to spend a lot of time practicing our routines with them. And we performed for a opening to a wrestling tournament that is happening at our school. So it's through things like this that we get to learn a lot about the Indian culture and we also get to share more about our culture from the US as well. So whether it be teaching some of Steph's salsa moves or Raya's awesome swing dancing or teaching our 84 year old Hindi teacher how to do the dab, we've found lots of ways to share our culture and learn about theirs in exchange. And also we obviously at school, we spend a lot of time learning Hindi and speaking Hindi. Every day we have three hours of Hindi classes with three different teachers. And here you can see one of our Hindi teachers on the right hand side 
This is our teacher, Mishra, sir, and he's 84 years old. No, 85 years old. We just celebrated his birthday this month. I almost forgot. It was a very fun and exciting day. But uh, here you can see him walking with Raya down some steps at our school. And I just like to point out that I really love the expression on his face. I really think that that just kind of encaptures how people react when we wow them with our Hindi skills that we've gained so far. And it's really great to not only be learning about the culture while living here in Indore, but also to be able to speak their language, the language that is spoken here. We are learning so much more because of that. We are not only able to connect with just more people because we speak the language, but also we get to learn things in how they are originally in their own language. And that's really something special. Um, and then uh, we also, through school, get to go on lots of fun trips. So on the left, on the top picture, you can see me at a fruit market. And this was earlier on um, in our program that we got to go out one day with our Hindi teacher, Parvez sir, and go try to purchase some fruit in Hindi. And so we used our good questions like, Kitnekahe, how much does it cost? And things like that. We got to interact with a lot of people that we'd never met before, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and so this whole experience, we not only just get to talk to our friends, sometimes we walk around the school and talk to people working in the garden, we talk in our classroom. We just have learned so much, so, so much about all different aspects of the Indian culture by being at school. We're here six days a week. We only have one day off, but it's been a great time. I think that we all can say that we really, really enjoy our time at school. And we have also been pretty helpful, I would say, for some of the people here. Um, as four of us have already applied to colleges last year, we have been also able to kind of help answer some questions for our Indian peers that are applying to colleges in the US. So that's another way that we've been able to kind of serve people in our school community. We have also like been answering questions about the Common App that our, uh, the resource, the counselor, the college counselor asks. And I think that's been a big help for some people as well. And so like Raya said before, I just think that at school, it's really important to, um, especially with the political climate in the US right now, be really good examples of what it means to be an American citizen. And I will pass it on to Steph to talk a little bit more about how we deal with the stereotypes that people have of the US. And she's gonna talk about it more in the host family perspective. Um, hi everyone, I'm Stephanie and I'm from New Jersey. So I'm also a gap year student. But today I would really like to talk about host families. Um, I come from a different part of the US like the rest of the girls. So I come from a different family. Um, we love, I come from a family from Latin America. So we love rice and beans. So this has been one of the things that I've bonded over with my family. Um, and something else really great is being able to teach my sister and brother Spanish. Um, on the bottom right corner, you can see my older brother and also my younger sister. Um, culture exchange is such a big part of our program. Um, every day we learn something new. Every day we learn new words in Hindi. Every day we're able to express ourselves in different ways. Um, something fun that we all love to do is to make food with our family, even if it turns out really, really bad. Our families just like to see that we're trying. Um, but something that I've been able to do, just like teach my family different meals um, that we have at my household in the US, I've been able to make green chutney and also have paratas, which are a really big thing with us. And I'm obsessed with them, just as some other girls, um, us other five really love pani puri as well. Um, something else that we like to do is try on traditional clothes. So um, we are able <laughs> to um, go shopping with our moms, even our younger sisters. We all have sisters, which is really, really cool. Um, I've been able to buy a lenga, which is kind of like a long skirt and a short top with a jupata, like someone else had said beforehand. Um, we've been able to wear these to different cultural events. Um, one of the other girls had mentioned Nagar Kirtan, which is a religious celebration in the Sikh religion. Um, we've also been able to express as well our religions, even if we aren't religious. Um, 
I myself have been able to take my family to church, which is something really different. And being open-minded and keeping the dialogue going with my family is something really important to me, as well as the other girls. My sister is constantly asking me questions. She's constantly asking me stories, which is something that is so amazing because she has such a bright mind as well as all our other sisters. And it's really cool to talk about different things in the US as well as here. And you know, every day I, I've, in the first month or so, we got a lot of questions about what it's like to be an American. And like Megan had said, the political climate and what's going on right now. And I think it's been really important for us to express how we feel and how our life has been, um, as well as um, also elders that we've met. Um, I think it's really cool to see and really different that we're able to see how India has been in the past. And in the top right corner of the slide, you can see Raya and two of her elder family members. Um, the elder man is 106 years old and the woman is 96. Um, we've been able to use our Hindi tremendously every single day, wherever we go with our teachers, wherever we go with our families. And on this specific trip that we went on, um, we heard about the elders man schooling as well as his lifestyle. We were able to see different villages as well in the different area of Madhya Pradesh where we're living right now. Um, and then on the left side, you can see uh, Megan's two sisters and they are enjoying some pancakes. So Megan on her different exchanges has been able to make pancakes for all her family members. So like I talked about before, it's really cool how we're able to share the diversity in the US as well as share diversity within India because we see every single day, like I said before, how different lifestyles are depending on the different regions that people come from. Um, if we go on to the next slide, I can show you more pictures of the different families. <laughs> okay, so on the top left corner, you can see Alice and her two sisters sporting some nice traditional wear. Um, next to that, you can see Megan and her family looking very beautiful um, in her sari. Um, next, you can also see Lucia and her family. Um, to the left, you have me and also my family. Um, we are at the Gurdwara, where I was able to perform puja as well as serve langar. Um, langar is a religious meal that everyone sits down to enjoy. Um, I, like Raya has said before, being a foreigner um, is something that really sets us aside and sometimes pushes us back. But I think what's really good and really great about being part of religious ceremonies is that we're able to take part in puja, for example, or be a part of langar. Um, one day I actually was able to serve in langar, um, which is something really different. I was able to practice my Hindi. Um, in the different photos um, that I talked about before, um, we were also celebrating Diwali, which is also something great, that we were to meet different family members. And you can also see Raya on the bottom left corner with her mom and sister. But because the theme of this is service, I just like to say how important it is for us to definitely keep an open mind about what we're doing and why we're really here in India. And I think being a part of a host family is a great way for us to talk about our values and what being an American is like. And the language, specifically learning Hindi, has really brought me and also the other girls closer to our family, as well as the culture. And every day we grow so much just because because we're able to speak one sentence in Hindi, one word in Hindi, and be able to communicate with strangers, our teachers, our classmates, whoever it is, and also exchange students. Um, so we've had a tremendous amount of exchange students at our school, but Lucia is going to talk a little bit about them. So here's Lucia. Hi, my name is Lucia, and I'm from Austin, Texas. And um, so this is, we're, we attend the Emerald Heights International School in Indore, Madhya Pradesh. And this is the first year that um, Emerald Heights has hosted year-long Miss Lake Exchange students. They've hosted uh, previously, I think, the six-week Hindi programs, um, but it's very exciting that we're their first batch of students. Um, our school also hosts other AFS exchangers, which is our hosting organization. So we've had the opportunity to meet um, three batches of exchange students. One, uh, one girl was from Germany and she was here for two months. And then um, a gr gr two girls were here from South Africa here for a month. And then just yesterday, um, another batch of kids from South Africa were here for about a week. 
So we've been here for about four and a half months now, and I would say that we kind of have the swing of things down. We kind of have the ins and outs of different cultural situations and personalities. And so through our experience, I think that we are able to do a good job imparting our knowledge with the other exchangers. And we kind of serve as a cultural liaison, explaining different situations and how to react in cultural events. And um, we, I think one of the funniest times for me was when we went out to lunch with um, a group of exchange students and we were served dal bati, which is a, a pretty common meal, especially served in the villages. And um, one of the students just tried to eat the bati uh, plain like a piece of bread, which although it might be hard to, for some of you to understand this if you've never eaten dal bati before, we had to explain to them that, no, actually you have to pour your dal on top of your bati and this is how you eat it, um, the more traditional way. So that was a little funny for us. Um, and we've also, through our exchange students, we've served as translators, um, which, uh, translating different simple messages between um, people, people and staff at school to the exchangers and vice versa. So that's been good to practice our Hindi skills and um, kind of show off how much we've learned. And in this picture um, on the left is uh, all of us in front of our school's um, LKG castle. And in the middle of the group is um, one of the exchangers from Germany. And then on the right picture is Steph with uh, two South Africans when we went on an outing with the school. You can go to the next slide. So um, we, the five of us, Nisli girls, are part of what we call a behinchata. And uh, this word was actually created by us. It's, uh, it, this word does not actually exist in Hindi. Um, and in class, we learned the word for brotherhood, which is by chata. And we realized that there actually is no word for sisterhood. And uh, we kind of wanted something that would properly describe the, the bond and the relationship that we have with each other. And so thus the Bahin Chata was born. And um, in the first few weeks, especially, uh, we all served as important members of the Bahin Chata, um, making sure that everyone was adjusting well and helping each other get through different problems that we faced with our host families and um, with adjusting to life here and just the culture shock. And we continue to face several problems, like many problems throughout our day, just um, get, like getting even more adjusted to life here in India and with our Hindi skills. But I think that we all provide each other with strength and encouragement to overcome these problems and to best serve as exchange students and U.S. ambassadors. And um, in the picture on the top is all the crucial members of the Behin Chata on an outing. And then below that is um, a picture of all of us in school celebrating Raya's birthday. And we have all kind of come together to make sure that every important um, American holiday is celebrated. So as you can see there, there's some pumpkins to celebrate Halloween that um, Alice's grandma actually sent to us, which was very nice and helped us put, help us, helped us get in the festive mood. And um, I think that making sure that we all are still um, getting a little taste of American culture has been an important part of our exchange as well. Um, so that is all that we have to present, but we are going to open it up to questions. And yeah, so, so feel free to, we're all gonna come over here and feel free to ask any questions that you have in the chat box and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Great, thank you so much um, to Raya, Alice, Megan, Stephanie, and Lucia for your um, thoughtful and and rich presentations. I, I know um, we've all learned so much about your time in India and thank you for sharing um, what it's meant to serve abroad for you. Um, before we open up the floor, I just wanted to take a minute right now to share two Nisli resources with the audience if you'd like to learn more about the Nisli program. The first website is the uh, nisliforyouth.org website. It's the main website for the NISLI program to learn about the programs offered and how to apply. 
And the second site is Nisley Interactive, which, is, um, which features stories written by current students and alumni about their experiences on program and how Nisley has continued to impact their lives um, since returning home. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, it looks like some questions are already starting to come in. Um, Nisley students, if before answering the questions, if you could say the question out loud, that would be great. So then we can catch the, quest, the question in this recording of the event. Okay, we're unmuted now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we go to the Q&A button? Okay. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, we are very open. Um, so go ahead, whenever you're ready. Okay, we've got a couple. <laughs> um, in your experience, is food a bridge or a barrier to cross cultural understanding? Can you please give specific? All right. <laughs> Thank you, Eliza McGinnis. All right, um, Eliza. <laughs> Who would like to answer this one? I think. I think that food for me has been a bridge to cross cult to, for cultural understanding. I came in really, really loving Indian food. That was a big plus for me when I found out that I'd be, get to spend my time in India this year. And when I got here, I realized that most of the food that I was expecting to eat that I eat in the U.S. when I go out for Indian food is not really the same kind of food that I have every day at home. And so it was kind of actually difficult for me to adjust at first, but or just different, I would say. But I have grown to love all of the food I eat at home every day, and I'm really I, I kind of like I'm used to all of my meals, lots of dal chawal, which is dal rice, and I really really love the food here. And I think that making food with my host mom has been a great great way to learn more about the Indian culture. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I think uh, the lack of naan here is really killer. Uh, it's definitely one of the things I was looking forward to, and I've had naan like three times. But um, other than that, definitely a bridge. I've had a lot of fun trying all sorts of food and trying to make my family banana bread. Yes. Another thing I'd like to add is that not only is it a bridge for us to better understand Indian culture, but I think that food is a definitely um, important for us to share like what we eat in the U.S. Mm -hmm. with our host families. Uh, one big stereotype that I faced here is that all Americans, all they ever eat is meat, which um, a lot of us are vegetarian, and four out of the five of us are vegetarian. Yes. <laughs> I'm not vegetarian. <laughs> and um, so that's been really important for us to share kind of like what we would normally eat at home, and I, I really love fruit, so I've expressed to my family a lot that I, I really like eating fresh fruits and vegetables, so that's been important and for my exchange. Yeah. Um, also here, food um, kind of equals love, and so our host families have all shown us how much they care about us by giving us just tons and tons of food. Um, you know, even if we say we're full multiple times, we're, they, you know, that means nothing. Um, <laughs> and so even when we uh, think that I mean, I don't know, this is kind of graphic, but even when we think we're gonna vomit because we just can't eat any more dal chawal, or we can't eat any more paneer, no matter how delicious it is, um, it, we definitely are feeling the love of our families. One more thing I wanna address about food is the picture I forgot to talk about on my slide, which is a picture of the first salad I ever had at my house here in India. So exciting, I can't even explain. After three months without salad, fresh spinach in your refrigerator, I mean, it was like Christmas. <laughs> And so, and it was so sweet. That was another example of food really being a bridge because I don't know how many times I've just been like thinking out loud and being like, salad, you know? And, and so my mom caught on and, um, and she just, she somehow procured spinach. It's not really a thing here, but she brought it home. And now, honestly, ever since that first salad, like we have salad as many nights as we don't. And so, I mean, I feel like that was service for me introducing them to salad. And it's definitely <laughs> service to them to, you know, keep me in my lettuce, which I just love. Definitely. So, do you want to go to the next question? Yeah, we yeah, have a lot to say about food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you support one another as exchange students and help each other face challenges such as homesickness? Yeah. So, I definitely think that we have made a sisterhood and, you know, I think our first month, um, just speaking for myself, was really a big challenge. Um, I was homesick. Um, I, my stomach was upset at times. Um, I couldn't speak the language. I couldn't communicate, which was really hard for me. 
But I think because of all five of us, we were able to get over the biggest hump, which was definitely for me, my first month. Um, so I'm so thankful for all five of us. And I think our sisterhood is keeping us strong. Um, we have six more months um, and then in January we're going to boarding. Um, so, you know, I'm excited. I think we're all excited to be able to experience a lot more. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, our next question is, what has been the biggest challenge during this journey? Hmm. Uh, other than the lack of salad, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, honestly. I think at first, um, it's, you know, we were prepared for culture shock and how different things were going to be before we were left. But just the initial adjustment, I think, was really hard on all of us because we all knew it was going to be a challenge. Um, but you know, you don't really understand until you're here. So that's when the Behen Chata came in. And that was yeah, I'd say there's a there's a lot of things you can't really predict. Like I I had heard, you know, like Indians are more strict and stuff. But one of the hardest things for me was that like my family on Sundays almost never leaves the house. And like you know, I I really like to be active. And I'd be like, oh my, like what am I doing with my life? And um. And that was so hard for me to get used to. And again, that's where they were so supportive and I could call them and I really felt like I had, I had people to talk to. And now, you know, it's just an example of how adjusted I am. Like we went out last Sunday and I was like, what are we doing? This is my time. Like, I wanna sleep, I wanna write. Like I'm into this staying at home thing. Um, but there's just a lot of things like that that you, you, can't really, you can't really understand, like Alice said, until you're here. Um, how is the concept of volunteerism different in India? Hmm. Well, partially it kind of just doesn't exist in a way. Like, um, people just don't go out and say like, okay, I need my community service hours for school. That's not really, I mean, there are people at our school that do go, go out and get traditional community service hours like we would for our schools in the U.S., but it's not as common. Like, I don't know, for a lot of the community service, like we said before, it was, you know, showing other people that we're planting trees, but not necessarily yeah. planting that many trees. Yes, so it was a lot more awareness-based rather than mm -hmm. actually doing. It was more awareness and telling people about different things that are going on and what you can possibly do. So, for example, like Alice was saying, the Better India um, campaign, how you can help India become a better place and help with the environment and hygiene and so on. I think the, the idea of service, as we were talking, talking about um, in the beginning, we like to think of it, is definitely still prevalent here. It's just taken a different way. So, I mean, I think sometimes in America, like, you know, we get caught up in, like, I need this many hours, and we forget what's really at the base of service. Yeah. And even though, like, they don't think about it the same way here, it still exists. Like, I see when my family's serving guests with so much generosity, they, don't, they often don't even know who's in their house. And yet, you know, they're bringing them chai, they're bringing them food. And the same thing with respect to elders, you know, like, Sometimes in America, we become impatient with our elders, you know, but here that's really not a thing. Like it's about, it's about listening and it's about being respectful. And so I think those values of humbling yourself and trying to serve the world around you are probably prevalent everywhere in the world, but they just deal with them different ways. So the next question that we have is, what are you all individually looking forward to for the second half of your program? Truly. Uh, for, um, yeah. Yeah. So I think that we all, um, as a group, think that we're super, we've been super appreciative of our host families, and well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> I think, I think well, we're still going to uh, go back on the weekends for to our host families, but for the week, um, starting in January, we're going to be in boarding, and um, I'm very excited for, for boarding personally because I just think that it's going to be a great opportunity for me to bond with my Indian classmates and make stronger bonds with them that hopefully will last further in the future. Yeah. Um, and I just think uh, one more like thing that I'm looking forward to is just learning more and more Hindi, you know? Yes. That's kind of like the huge thing that keeps me going. Like it's the Benchrata and the Hindi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> whenever I'm like, why am I here, you know? And so it's just, it's so cool that every day, I mean, I feel like every day I learn more Hindi. And so I'm just, I'm so excited to just keep building and keep being able to have more conversations. Yeah. Well, I just think that, yeah, I agree with Raya, like, just seeing how far we've come in four and a half months, if we 
get as much better as we have in this past four and a half months in the next five months, we, I think that we'll be doing pretty well. So I, I'm really excited to see our final Hindi language skills. And also, yes, I'm excited for boarding because <laughs> I'm excited to start rock climbing in the afternoons. So. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also really excited to travel more. Uh, hopefully, we've been to actually a good amount of places here in Madhya Pradesh. Um, our school is so amazing. They take us on different trips, but I'm really excited to see more different parts of India. We've been to South India and we live in Central India, and hopefully we get to visit Northern India. Crossing my fingers, we'll see. <laughs> um, I am kind of, I mean, I'm excited about boarding. I'm a little sad to leave my host family. Um, but I am looking forward to um, sort of a, com a combination of what Lucy and Raya said. So we've just now sort of um, started having like real, I mean, you know, obviously we're always trying to have real conversations in Hindi, but especially with our Indian friends who speak such good English, um, sometimes it's hard not to fall back um, on English when talking with our friends, but I'm really excited to um, bond with our friends further, um, especially when their board exams are done, mm -hmm. and especially, yeah, talking to them. The next question is, um, what are the biggest rewards so far during this journey? For, uh, for me, I think that, well, definitely learning Hindi and just being able to connect with um, people in my community, but also just, like, Sometimes it's hard for me to realize how much I've become adjusted to life here in India. And even still, we have people who meet us every day and they're like, what do you think of India? Like, what are your first impressions? We're like, well, actually, we've been here for four and a half months. And, you know, I don't even really think that, like, we're in India anymore. I'm just kind of like, this is kind of life here and this is the way things go. And so that has been really cool for me to look back at my first weeks and first month and just see how, um, like, my first reactions to what India was like. and. And now that I've adjusted, it just feels so amazing. Yeah. I think my family is one of the most important things to me. Um, I, every day, or like, maybe not every day, but almost every week, my host mom will look at me and say, will you remember me in four years? And my response is always, yes, of course I will remember you. I've created a new life here, um, and I'd like to one day bridge both my life in the U.S. as well here in India. And I'd love for my family to come and visit me um, in the U.S. as well as here in India. And I think having an extended family no matter where it is has really bridged my life and I think I really or at least I hope I've impacted my family in some certain way if not one day hopefully right. yeah. um, our, our next question is from Hannah who helped us out a lot when we were preparing to go to Hi, Hannah. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear from you. Um, Hannah asks what lessons have you learned during your exchange so far that you think you will incorporate into your life back in the U.S.? Oh, so much. Yes, yeah, so um, I think the most important thing for me is, like, the simple things. Like, I was talking about how we just stay home all day. Like, uh, the, the, the other day we ordered pizza for the first time my entire time here, and I was just ecstatic. My family was like, yeah, there's pizza on the way. I was like, what? There's pizza on the way. <laughs> That's great. And um, <laughs> so I think uh, it's really what I've what – I've, feel like India has taught me as a culture, not just the fact that I'm on an exchange, but the actual culture of India has taught me how to slow down and appreciate things. And partly I think that's just because I'm an exchange student and I have a different schedule, but it's also just the way things work here. Like there's a concept of Indian time, which means if you say you're leaving at five, you're probably leaving at 7.30. And at first this is the kind of stuff you would find really frustrating, but it's really taught me to just, you know, like whenever we go on a walk or whenever we do basically, um, anything kind of small but fun you know with our families it just it really makes me happy because you just really have to learn to treasure those moments and I'm you know I think I'm going to take that back to the U.S. and I'll just be able to get a lot more joy out of just the daily things. Oh. Yeah and just going off of that though we've also just learned how to keep ourselves entertained for long hours yes. and um, <laughs> I think we've done a really good job of finding things to do like when we're just alone in the house or you know our sisters are at their long tuitions doing studying for their boards or whatever they're studying for. We've done a good job of keeping ourselves occupied. And I think I'm going to really enjoy taking my head nod back to the U.S. Oh, you yeah. haven't really seen us doing it in this. I guess we were just kind of in this U.S. mindset. <laughs> yeah. But we really have picked that up during our time here. <laughs> 
Yeah, um, I think that definitely, um, like Megan said, I will come back to the U.S. Um, more independent and, you know, with new uh, self-advocacy skills, but also just being um, sort of an ambassador for the U.S., especially um, with the Nisley Scholarship. Um, I've learned to put more thought into what I do. So, um, you know, how I interact with people, um, I don't know, that just, you know, how much I'm studying or what I say in Hindi, um, I definitely, you know, make sure that what I, my actions are being I think also, um, just one more thing to add is kind of overcoming personal differences yeah. is something that has really got to me. So like my sister always, like the first few weeks, like every time we walk out the door, like I would be in front of her and she'd be like, come Raya, and I'd be like, I'm coming. <laughs> and um, that was the kind of stuff that really annoyed me in the beginning. And I just couldn't understand why she could say it. And it felt like like an indignity to my independence. And now, though, sometimes it still annoys me. I'm more like, she's like, come, Ryan. And I'm like, oh, what a Madre move. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so that to see how far I've come and to see how, especially with my sister, I just feel like I've made so much progress from being like, um, a lot of things that she did, does differently, partly because she's a younger sister and partly because of cultural differences, I, they just annoyed me so much in the beginning. And now I'm learning a lot more to kind of love her for them and see that those are ways that she expresses affection. And I think those kinds of skills to deal with differences are going to be helpful for the rest of my life. I think that um, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is to kind of find the more humorous side of different situations. I think that a lot of times in everyday life and also back in the US, it's easy to get frustrated with different people or different situations. And um, a lot of times, like there's not much that I can do about um, situations here in India. And so I just kind of have to take a step back and remind myself why I'm here and um, just really appreciate all that everyone has done for me and making my exchange the best that it can be. Definitely. Um, I think especially for me, I think all the stories and everything that I've learned here, everything, that I've taught people, I really want to come back to the U.S. and be able to tell stories and really to educate people. I think education is one of the most important things for me, and I'm just so excited to go back to the U.S. and tell people about my experience and also um, talk about different things that have happened to all of us, as well as myself and the amazing people I've met throughout my time here. I think our last question is, um, what advice would you share with students thinking about applying to NISLI next year? Um, I can start off going back to my slide. Um, I would just, um, I mean, be, be genuine when you're applying, but, um, you know, this is obviously a challenge and it's um, a really, you know, incredible and rewarding experience, but it really requires you uh, to be motivated. So not just in terms of volunteer work, but in our Hindi lessons, um, within our host families, with our academic classes, um, you know, self-advocacy and being persistent is, is really crucial here. So not like you um, have to have those skills developed right now, but um, at least, you know, having an interest in being um, a motivated student mm -hmm. or being aware of that, I think. There's the head nod a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, I think keeping an open mind is extremely important. You're going to a different country. You don't know what to expect. I mean, you can research all you want, but you know what? Research isn't going to prepare you for everything in life. So definitely keep an open mind. Stay optimistic no matter what you're doing. Like Lucy said, you know, there's always a humorous side no matter what it is. It may seem like the end of the world, but one day you're going to look back and say, hey, you know, I have a great group of friends here, if it's your bahanchara, if it's just a friend in class, you know, you just have to stay optimistic and keep going, keep pushing. You got this, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I also wanna say, um, I think, have faith in yourself and in Definitely. each other. Um, that's been one of the things that gets me going. Sometimes I'm like, I don't feel like I'm doing a good job here. I'm not sure I'm ever gonna overcome these challenges. <laughs> not sure I'm ever gonna overcome these challenges, right? And then you just have to think about, think about how far you've come. Even just stepping on the plane away from your parents was coming so far, you know, once you get to that point. And you just, you really have to congratulate yourself and think about um, how well, how well you're doing, how difficult it is, but how you're doing a great job with it. And just have faith um, that you're going to, that you're going to be okay and that your friends are going to get you through it too. So our next question is, how do you maintain a high level of motivation throughout the year? 
Oh, I'm sorry for answering that question. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, of course, the hentata keeps me motivated. Um, and but one thing that I think it was especially hard for me to adjust to at first was um, all the time that I have at home when I come home from school. I think that we kind of mentioned it earlier, but when we come home from school, it's usually um, we stay at home for most of the rest of the day. And um, one thing that has kept me motivated through my Hindi learning and through bonding with my host family has been keeping a to-do list for me and having goals for myself every single day. Like these are the things I want to get done and um, keep pushing myself with my, with my language skills and trying to talk to my host family as much as I can to better build the bridge between our language barrier and also hopefully build up a strong relationship with the family. Definitely just constantly keeping our purpose in mind here. Yeah. So obviously with Nisli, um, learning Hindi is um, our purpose, but you know, just centering ourselves and yeah. thinking about, yeah. I'm a big fan of centering, um, but yeah, you know, I mean, even just taking a second to meditate and think about how grateful I am for my host family, for my school, uh, for, for these four girls. Um, definitely keeps me motivated. And I think I write every night. I think pretty much all of us yeah, um, journal, keep journals. Or, or blogs. Yeah, yeah, journals and blogs. Um, and so uh, one thing I like to do that actually picks up in America, but it's helped me a lot here, is I write um, three things I enjoyed from the day every night, three things that brought me joy or that I felt good about. And um, just for me personally, I think for all of us, writing is a really good way to kind of reflect both and think about moving forward and keep up the like here's what was great here's what i enjoyed you know here's what i'm thinking about and here's the ways i want to grow and so i like to get that down every night and it really helps me be like goal centered and make sure i'm always moving forward yep. so i think that's all of our questions um tonight thank you so much for joining us <laughs> any last questions any yeah, more? we're open <laughs> Speak now or forever hold your peace. You could tell a funny story. Yeah, maybe. We have to take <laughs> 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 oh, we miss you, Teacher Julie. Oh. oh. <laughs> Good luck. Some I'm Hindi. Some Hindi. Hindi. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we, we were asked um, to show off some Hindi. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, Kesa Hindi. Meg, buddy, I'm Buddy, I'm Buddy, how are you? We are great. Aapko bhook bhag rahi hai. Are they hungry? Yes. Uh, we we haven't had dinner. dinner after this. Yep. You guys are probably <laughs> eating breakfast. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you too, TP. May sab bhoot yaad karti hoon. It means I miss you all and anyone who joined the call. Thank you so much for your support. Yeah, so really yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, wait. One last thing. Anything you'd add that you haven't heard hmm. just um i think we've all really found um i don't know we've gotten our sea legs here on yeah. top of the the behen chata and we're really excited to keep serving our communities and um you know just yeah. taking all the love yeah Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're so appreciative of everything you've done for me. Thanks to all our families. We love you. Have a yeah. good day. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much for sharing um, and for that most impressive Q and A at the end. You handled those questions so gracefully, and and I I know we all learned so much from you. So thank you for your time and your efforts, and thank you to everyone for attending this virtual event.